Hey folks, today I have a Hitchcock review for you. This time it's The Lodger, full title, The Lodger, A Story of the London Fog, from 1927. This silent film stars Ivor Novello as The Lodger and June Tripp as Daisy. It's one of Hitchcock's earliest films, not his first, but his first suspense film and thus widely considered the first official Hitchcock movie. It's also the first occurrence of the Hitchcock cameo, which happened simply because he needed an extra and filled the spot himself. He appears twice in this one, actually, and these cameos are so sneaky that I completely missed both of them. The story is that in the midst of a series of Jack the Ripper-style murders, a mysterious man takes a room at a boarding house, and soon his landlady starts to suspect that he might be the killer. It's based on a 1913 novel by Marie Bellick Lowndes, which has been adapted a few times, most notably in 1944 with Laird Krager, Merle Oberon, and George Sanders, as well as in 1932 as The Phantom Fiend, again starring Ivor Novello, this time opposite Elizabeth Allen, and in 1953 and 2009. The pervasive question in this movie is, is he or isn't he? Without the context of the murder plot, the lodger's behavior would still be unusual, but probably wouldn't seem sinister or suspicious. However, in this scenario, context is everything. There are various plot elements here that would later become associated with the Hitchcock brand. Suspicion, paranoia, a manhunt, an antagonistic policeman, blonde victims, and I bet if he had made it later in his career, when he had more power and freedom as a director, the resulting film would have been even darker. The Lodger starts off with remarkable visuals, creative opening titles immediately followed by a shocking image of a blonde girl screaming. Hitchcock was influenced by German Expressionism and adopted techniques from that movement. This is especially noticeable in the sequence that cuts back and forth between the lodger going out in the night and the landlady waking up and suspecting him. Ivor Novello is also interestingly filmed. His face is nearly washed out, except for his eyes, which are enhanced with heavy makeup in typical early film fashion. His wide-eyed gaze, plus the subtle emphasis on his hands, are an important component of his performance, and give him a ghostly, tortured air that keeps the audience guessing. I like The Lodger overall. It's got some very good suspense and some striking visuals that really stick with me, but there are a couple things. First, a significant amount of the story revolves around a love triangle. The policeman boyfriend is kind of a ridiculous person, and I didn't like him, but I didn't like the girl, Daisy, either. She's not a very developed character. The most we know about her is that she's a flirt, leading the boyfriend along, playing hot and cold with him, and then running off upstairs to flirt with the lodger. This is annoying, and it really takes away from the momentum of the rest of the story, the better part of the story. Another thing, which has nothing to do with Hitchcock's work and is more related to the specific version that I saw, is that I found the music score a little distracting. It's not bad, the opening scenes are well accompanied and it generally matches what's on screen, but there were some moments of it that I just didn't care for. Some moments where the music would abruptly stop and then you'd cut to a new scene and what seemed like canned 1920s dance music would start. It was kind of related to what was going on in the movie, but it just... Uh, also, there was one moment where a musical line was lifted straight out of Peter and the Wolf, and that was odd. One other thing I have to mention is that the listings for this movie are so complicated, with inconsistent lengths and print qualities. If you look it up on the Turner Classic Movies database, they list it as being 75 minutes long. But we taped it off of Turner Classic Movies, and it's not 75 minutes, I'd say it's about 90, with good print quality and color tinting. I think this is the 1999 BFI restored version with a new score by Ashley Irwin. Our trusty friend, the $5 bargain bin boxed set, includes The Lodger and says it's 80 minutes long, but it's actually 90 minutes. Straight black and white, no tinting, awful print quality. This thing, such a disappointment. If you look on YouTube, you'll find a 68-minute version with an okay print and the same music score as was used in the version that was aired on Turner Classic Movies that we taped, 
Why it's so much shorter, I don't know. I haven't done a side-by-side -side comparison. I did click through it and I didn't notice anything missing, but it doesn't make sense. But you'll also find on YouTube a couple uploads of a 90-minute version with better print quality and a different soundtrack. It seems very similar to what I saw on Turner Classic Movies, except with even better print quality and good music for the most part. Except for this random contemporary sounding love song that pops up a couple times that didn't fit in. The root of the matter is that not all versions of The Lodger are created equal. So if you start watching one and the quality is poor, go find a better one because better ones exist and you won't enjoy the movie at all if it looks awful. Anyway, that's The Lodger. Let me know in the comments if you've seen it, what you thought of it, without spoiling the ending, please. Thanks for watching! Bye!